Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to discuss fundamental solutions in RD for the Laplacian. The outline of the lecture is as follows. First, we introduce the idea of a fundamental solution. Then we move on to find fundamental solutions for Laplace operator in RD and then we study some properties of fundamental solutions. Fundamental solution, what is it? Why is it fundamental? So what is a fundamental solution? Let us start with uh, a matrix analogy. Let A be a d by d invertible matrix and B be a vector in RD. Consider the linear system Ax equal to B. B is given, you want to find solution for x. Since A is invertible, it has exactly one solution, we know that. Imagine you have a factory which sells solutions to the linear system Ax equal to B. Whenever a customer gives you a specific B, you will give him x to the customer. Will you solve every time a customer approaches you with his B? That means whenever a customer comes and gives you B, you try to go and uh, find solution for X uh, by your own method how to solve the system. And as a customer varies, you have to solve the system again and again. Will you do that? Or do you have a smart way of running your factory? So what is a fundamental solution? Find solutions corresponding to a few selected B for the linear system Ax equal to B. Solve the system for B in E1, E2 up to Ed. That means for B equal to E1 you solve, B equal to E2 you solve Ax equal to E2. Similarly, you solve up to Ax equal to Ed. That means D times you solve this system. What is E1, E2, Ed? It is the basis for Rd. Let us say we take the standard order basis E1, E2, Ed for Rd. So, E1 will be the d tuple where the first component is 1, rest of them are 0, E2 is the second component is 1, rest of them 0 and similarly Ed is the dth component is 1 and first d minus 1 components are 0. We know that this is the standard order basis for Rd. So, for each of the basis elements you solve Ax equal to b. Express any other b which the customer gives you as a linear combination of these basis vectors which is very easy. If b is equal to b1, b2, bd, then b is nothing but b1, e1 plus b2, e2 up to bd, ed. If b is a vector like this, then b is nothing but b1, e1 plus b2, e2. So, you know the readily what are the coefficients which are appearing in this combination. Solution for Ax equal to b is a linear combination of these solutions Xi's which are solving Axi equal to Ei. So the set x1, x2, xd may be called a fundamental set of solutions in the context of Ax equal to b for obvious reasons. We are on the lookout for a collection of functions associated to the Laplace operator which mimic this set x1, x2, xd in the case of Ax equal to b. So why is fundamental solution so named? We will get a fundamental set of solutions for Laplace operator having an infinite number of functions. So the set we are going to get for Laplace operator will consist of infinite number of elements. Unlike the case of linear system Ax equal to b where it had only d number of elements. It is not a surprise as function spaces are infinite dimensional unlike Rd which is finite dimensional. Any solution to Laplace in u equal to f is expected to be a superposition of the solutions from the fundamental set. Sum in Rd will be replaced by an integral. We are going to see this. The word fundamental set is often used as a substitute for a basis. So, fundamental solution for Laplace operator in Rd. Laplace equation is invariant under any real orthogonal 
transformation. What does that mean? Let m be a d by d orthogonal matrix that is m transpose m equal to identity matrix. Define a change of coordinates on R d using this orthogonal matrix m. By this set y equal to m x, x is your original coordinate system you are introducing new coordinates y, y equal to m x. Let u be denoted by u of x. Define a function v, a function of y by this v of y equal to u of m transpose x. Let delta x and delta y denote the Laplacian in the x coordinate system and y coordinate system respectively. Conclude, so this is going to be an exercise. We have done enough exercises on change of variables and how it affects a PDE, how the PDE gets transformed under a change of variables. Conclude the invariance of Laplacian under orthogonal transformations. That is Laplacian with respect to x variables of u is same as Laplacian with respect to y variable of the function v, where y and x are related by y equal to mx. In particular, Laplacian is invariant under rotations. Thus, it is natural to look for solutions to Laplacian u equal to 0 which have rotational symmetry. Whenever we are looking for solutions on domains which themselves have this rotational symmetry that is rotationally invariant. For example, R d trivially, balls in R d and annular regions in R d. So, finding fundamental solution in R d, how do we do that? Fix a point xi in R d, look for solutions to Laplace in u equal to 0 having this form that v xi of x because xi is fixed. So, for every fixed xi in R d we are going to find solution v xi of x equal to psi of r. See this already suggests we are going to find as many functions as the elements in R d. So, look for solutions to Laplace in equal to 0 having this form v xi x equal to psi of r. What is r? r is nothing but norm x minus xi that is the distance from x to the fixed point xi which is given by this formula of course. This is a Euclidean norm therefore this is equal to square root of i equal to 1 to d x i minus xi i square. Substituting the formula for v xi in Laplacian u equal to 0 yields Laplacian v xi of x equal to psi double dash of r plus d minus 1 by r into psi prime of r and that is equal to 0 this is what we want. Therefore, finding v is i is same as finding psi and psi satisfies this ODE. So, we need to solve this ODE. This is a second order ODE with variable coefficient, but it is a simple variable coefficient. So, it is very easy to solve. So, from this equation psi double dash of r plus d minus 1 by r into psi dash of r equal to 0 which was obtained on the last slide, we get psi dash of r equal to constant times r power 1 minus d because there is no term psi in this equation without derivative right. You set psi dash of r equal to some g of r then this will be a first order ODE you can solve that and you get this expression. So, therefore, psi dash of r equal to constant times r power 1 minus d. Integrating the last equation we get psi of r equal to c times log r if d equal to 2 and c by 2 minus d r power 2 minus d if d is greater than or equal to 3. So, therefore, the form looks different in dimension 2 and dimensions bigger than or equal to 3. This is the reason why we will be considering d equal to 2 separately and d greater than or equal to 3 separately in our analysis in the next 2 lectures. So, in terms of x coordinates v xi of x is c times log r is norm x minus xi. So, substituting r equal to norm x minus xi we get this expression v xi of x. Okay. So, now we are ready to define what is called fundamental solution for Laplacian or fundamental solution for Laplace operator in R d. 
The fundamental solution for Laplacian is this function k it is a mapping from R d cross R d minus diagonal you are removing a set from R d cross R d a certain set which you will define to R defined by exactly the same formula as before. So, we have to simply mention what is it diagonal. Diagonal stands for all those x comma xi in R d cross R d such that x equal to xi. So, a remark on the function k of x xi for each fixed xi in R d the function x going to k of x xi satisfies Laplacian k of x xi equal to 0 for every x different from xi when x equal to xi there is a problem it is not defined k is not defined. But for any other x Laplacian k of x comma xi equal to 0. Thus k is a solution to Laplace equation on R d except for this xi. The family of these special solutions for each that is the family is indexed by xi in R d this family generates all solutions to Laplacian u equal to f that is why k is called the fundamental solution. Now compare the analogy that we have given in the case of system of linear equations fundamental set there were finitely many there x1, x2, xd here we have this family of functions indexed by xi in rd. We state this result and we do not prove the result. Let us look at some properties of fundamental solutions that is a theorem. Let k of x i denote the fundamental solution for Laplacian we have already defined this on, our, on an earlier slide. Let omega be a smooth bounded domain in R d. Let xi belongs to omega for u belonging to C2 of omega bar the following identity holds that is u of xi is equal to integral over omega of k x xi Laplace and u dx minus integral over boundary of omega k dou n u minus u dou n k d sigma. If u is C2 of omega bar and harmonic in omega that means Laplace in u equal to 0 then the first term will drop out then you have only this term. Then for xi in omega we get u xi equal to this integral which is the second term here. So, once you show 1, 2 follows immediately and the following equality holds in the sense of distributions on R d that is Laplacian k of x xi equal to delta xi. What we saw is Laplacian k of x xi equal to 0 whenever x is not equal to xi. Now, there is always this question what is that what happens at x equal to xi. So, this is that is the effect here delta xi comes in delta xi is the Dirac uh, delta in case you do not know this you can ignore I am going to explain what this means. This means that for every phi in C0 infinity of R d the following equality holds. So, so loosely speaking multiply with phi and integrate integral phi delta will give you phi of xi and here you do integration by parts transfer the Laplacian from k to phi and you get this. So, phi xi equal to integral over, over R d of k of x xi delta phi of x dx. Proof of 1 let u belongs to C2 of omega bar and xi be a point of omega. Note that we cannot apply Green's identity 2 directly with v equal to k x z we would like to do that, but we cannot do that. Why? Because k is singular at x equal to xi there is trouble for k at x equal to xi and here if you are trying to use v equal to k you have Laplacian k that will not be integral. So, there will be such problems. So, we will not do that. What we will do is we somehow remove this point xi. So, we cut out a ball b of xi rho from omega then everything is all right okay, along with its boundary. Cutting a ball along with its boundary means cutting this closed ball. Recall this is the notation we were using b closed xi comma rho means it is a 
all those points which are at a distance less than or equal to rho from the point xi. Here it is strictly less than for the open ball, this is a closed ball. And then we will apply Green's identity too. So let omega rho be omega minus the closed ball, Green's identity 2 with V equal to K of x xi on the domain omega rho reads as this, this is exactly Green's identity 2. I have just put V equal to K and then instead of omega I am doing an omega rho. Boundary of omega rho is a union of boundary of omega and S xi rho. For example, this is omega this is xi radius rho, I am removing this. So, this is my domain, where is the domain? This is the domain. So, this domain has two boundaries, one is this boundary and one is this boundary. Since Laplacian k is 0 for x different from xi, now in omega rho there is no xi, xi is taken out. Therefore, this is 0 and hence this term drops out. So, what we have is the first term on the LHS equal to this quantity and boundary consists of two parts. So, I have inputted that one is boundary of omega, other one is S of xi rho, this is a sphere. Now let us look at this term and try to simplify this term because the assertion 1 contains this term, this term and not this term but a simplified version of this. So let us look at the second term. Let us compute the second term on the RHS of this equation. This equal to this is the first term here minus the second term. So, let us address each of them separately. Note that for x on the sphere S xi rho, we have k x xi equal to psi of rho. Using this information and divergence theorem, we get k dou a nu equal to k is psi rho. So, it comes out, it does not depend on uh, the integration variable because k is constant. So, the psi of rho that comes out and integral of dou a nu over S xi rho. This is where we apply divergence theorem and we get in terms of Laplacian. So, minus psi of rho integral over the ball Laplacian u dx. The outward normal n on the sphere points towards its center xi. Let us see our picture, this is our omega and inside that we have removed a ball. Our domain is really this one. If you take a point here, normal if you take this side it is the inside pointing normal. So, this is not the one. So, this is the one which is outside pointing, outward pointing. So, therefore, this is the towards the center of this ball. Also note the dou n k of x i is nothing but minus psi dash of rho holes at points on the sphere s of xi rho. Thus we get integral of u dou n k equal to minus rho power 1 minus d by omega d integral over the sphere u d sigma. So, on the last slide we have proved this equality. Thus, the second term now is given by minus psi of rho integral over the ball of Laplacian plus rho power 1 minus d by omega d integral over the sphere of u d sigma. Since both u and Laplacian u are continuous at xi, we have assumed u is c2 of omega bar. As rho goes to 0, we have psi of rho into integral over the ball of radius rho of Laplacian goes to 0 because modulus of uh, psi of rho into this integral term is less than or equal to m times psi of rho into the volume of this ball. 
what is m? m is a bound for modulus of Laplace in u. Now psi of rho is like rho power d minus 2 whereas the volume of the ball is like rho power d therefore their product will behave like rho square. So therefore as rho goes to 0 this term goes to 0. Rho power 1 minus d integral of this sphere will go to omega d into u of xi where omega d denotes the surface area of the unit sphere in Rd. Please check these uh, assertions by yourself. Thus we have the following convergence of the second term as a rho goes to 0. This is the second term this goes to u of xi because the first term went to 0 second term went to u xi. Finally passing to the limit as rho goes to 0 in this equation we get this equation. This completes the proof of 1 u of xi equal to this integral minus this integral. This is what is stated in 1. As mentioned before statement 2 follows immediately from statement 1. Statement 3 follows from statement 1 by taking u equal to phi which is C0 infinity of omega. This completes the proof of uh, the theorem. Remark this formula we have just proved this is the assertion 1 gives a representation of the solution. You want to know u of xi it gives in terms of this k. Laplace in u is ok if you are solving Laplace in u equal to f this is known. If Laplace in u equal to 0 this term is not there. So this is a known term k is already known. But this second term involves dou n u as well as u. If you are solving Dirichlet problem u is known but this is not known. If you are solving Naiman problem dou n u is known on the boundary but u is not known. Let us discuss uh, this point a little bit. Of course this represents a solution if it exists. Of course we know that if solution exists it is going to be unique we already proved that. So this formula is a representation for u of xi in terms of values of u and values of dou n u on the boundary of omega. However, for Dirichlet problem note that only the values of u are prescribed on boundary of omega that means only this term is known and this is not known. And thus the formula given above is not useful for computing the solution. Note that the boundary values of u already determine a solution to Dirichlet problem and thus the quantity dou n u is not only not known it is already determined. We now present two sample theorems without proof which justify the naming of k of x xi as a fundamental solution. Theorem on logarithmic potential naming will be obvious once we state the theorem. Let f be a C2 function defined on R2 having compact support. Define the logarithmic potential on R2 by u of xi equal to 1 by 2 pi integral over R2 ln of norm x minus xi fx dx. Then the following assertions can be proved. Of course, we are not proving that is why I have stated as the following assertions can be proved. Logarithmic potential satisfies Laplace in u equal to f that means this formula is a solution to the Poisson's equation and u of xi goes to infinity as norm xi goes to infinity. In fact, we have the following asymptotic behavior of the logarithmic potential at infinity. u of xi is equal to m by 2 pi log norm xi plus big O of 1 by norm xi where m equal to integral of f over r2 which is a finite quantity because f is assumed to be compact support. So integral is finite. Logarithmic potential is the only solution to Laplace in u equal to f having the asymptotic behavior as mentioned in 2 above. So interpretation of potential 
a function u satisfying Laplacian u equal to f is said to be the potential due to the charge f in the context of electrostatics. Theorem on Newtonian potential. Let f belongs to C2 of R3 having compact support. Define the Newtonian potential on R3 by u i equal to minus 1 by 4 pi integral over R3 of fx by norm x minus i dx. Then the following assertions can be proved. Newtonian potential satisfies Laplace in u equal to f. u i goes to 0 as norm i goes to infinity. Newtonian potential is the only solution to Laplace in u equal to f that is in C2 of R3 and vanishes at infinity. So, let us summarize what we did in this lecture. Idea of a fundamental solution was introduced. Fundamental solution for Laplacian in Rd was obtained for d greater than or equal to 2. How solutions to Laplacian u equal to f may be obtained using fundamental solutions for Laplacian was mentioned the two theorems. In the next lecture, we will discuss the role of fundamental solutions for Laplacian in determining solutions to Dirichlet boundary value problem. Thank you.